Kendrick stood frozen in the torrential downpour. He stared wide-eyed into the abyss and slowly sank to his knees. It was out there, circling him. He dimly hoped that it couldn't see or smell him in the rain. Maybe it was just as blind as he was. And then through the constant thrum of rain, he heard it. Heavy breathing, slowly coming closer. Kendrick jumped to his feet and sprinted through the forest, weeding around tree trunks, jumping over logs and rocks. His boot fell off and he slowed down, wincing with each step. Twigs and stones tore apart the tender flesh of his rotted foot. Kendrick staggered, shaking beneath the icy needles of rain, propelled by his surging adrenaline. He heard the rain's relentless assault against the surface of the river. He was getting closer to escape. Somewhere his predator was watching. He could feel it. Kendrick's bare foot slipped through the mud and he fell forward with a wet smack. His sense of fight or flight possessed him. He dug his hands into the marshy turf and dragged himself forward through the thick stalks and stems of swamp vegetation. Kendrick pulled himself over a slope and he slid into frigid, fetid water. The cold shocked him and he thrust his head up out of the water, panting and shivering. There was a flash of lightning and he saw spider-legged mangrove trees surrounding him. The jungle seemed empty, devoid of life. That meant it was nearby. Kendrick knew he couldn't run anymore. Each breath he took burned through his lungs. His body was numb from the cold and his heart struggled to keep the thick blood pumping in his veins. It was time to hide. He cautiously waded through the chest-deep water towards the mangroves. Kendrick crawled into a mangrove's cage of roots and peered out at the black mirror of the water's surface. It appeared he had fallen into a pond. His only chance at escape had been a pipe dream. All he had left to do was sit and wait, shivering and gripped by terror. Through the storm, Kendrick could hear footsteps slowly padding around the water's edge. Each footstep was carefully placed, methodical and silent. He heard the predator sniffing the air, followed by a long, low growl. Leaves brushed softly against feathers and leathery skin. The creature was circling the pond, trying to locate Kendrick in the storm. Kendrick carefully tucked himself further back into the mangrove's den and stared at the water's dappled surface. He held his breath until his lungs felt sucked dry. There was a flash of lightning, and he saw the silhouette of the creature reflected on the water's surface. It was heavily distorted, but Kendrick could clearly see the outline of the animal's body. It was taller than a man, with a straight tail and muscular limbs. The creature raised its long snout, sniffing the air. The hooked claws flicked in anticipation. The creature's jaws parted into a toothy, rumbling snarl. It was only ten feet away. Kendrick trembled uncontrollably. Tears were lost with the rain on his face. A pitiful cry crawled from his lips like a worm, and he clasped his hands over his mouth to keep quiet. Urine flowed freely between his legs. Kendrick could hear the footsteps approaching slowly. The creature was taking its time. It knew that he had nowhere left to run. Kendrick's eyes began to adjust to the darkness. He saw the muscular legs of the creature standing before him. The sickle-shaped claws flexed and dug into the earth. Kendrick was petrified with fear. He could no longer think or comprehend his reality. He could only watch as the creature crouched in front of him and stared back with cold, calculating eyes. The creature spread its arms around the mangrove roots, cloaking the den with feathers. Its talons scraped against the root bark, one last embrace to ensure there would be no escape. The creature's eyes glowed yellow in the darkness, the feathers muffled the sound of the storm. Kendrick could only hear his own whimpering and the slow, steady breathing of the animal. It was so dark that he could barely see the jaws of the creature opening to reveal serrated teeth. The animal's hot breath, rancid with decay, washed over him. Kendrick could feel a desperate plea catch in his throat. Please... The creature's head shot forward and it snatched Kendrick's throat in its jaws. The animal shook him violently from side to side, ripping the flesh of his neck like tissue. 
Hot blood ran down Kendrick's torso, and the creature let go of him. Kendrick fell backwards, screaming, and a fiery pain flared through his body as talons sliced his stomach open. The creature was savage, growling and indifferent while Kendrick shrieked and pounded its snout with his fists. In the last fleeting moment of consciousness, Kendrick watched as the creature buried its snout into his abdomen and tugged out coils of intestine. The last thing he felt was his own horrendous death rattle boring through the ragged holes in his throat. This was not the war he knew. Primitive War by Ethan Pettis Read by Wayne June